So let's take a look how Angular 2 uses the MV whatever pattern. The model view controller pattern is not new. It's gone through many variations. It started off as MVC, the model view controller pattern, which is both a structural and a design pattern for software developers. The MVP or model view presenter pattern was used extensively in Windows desktop development. And in recent years, the model view view model pattern was also introduced for WPF and Silverlight applications. So with all these different variations of the model view pattern, you can adopt the model view whatever pattern as Angular has done. Angular 2 builds on this model view whatever pattern. What exactly is MVC? We may have heard that it focuses on separation of concerns. What does that mean? It means that each part of the MVC does only one thing, and it does it well. The model knows only about the data that's either being modified or being displayed. The view knows only how to display the data. It doesn't do any of the, the manipulation. The view knows only how to display the data or receive input from a user. And the controller knows which model and view are needed to complete the task at hand. How does this work? Well, a request comes into the controller, and the controller determines which model is needed, and it builds that model, and it gets that model. It uses that model to create a view, passing in the data. In order to create the view, the view has to be aware of the model, but it doesn't create it itself. Once the view is created, the controller then passes that view back to the requesting resource. So how does this translate into a real-world application or to a business? This simple hotel application shows that a guest comes up to the front desk and requests their bill. The front desk clerk looks up the bill and sends it to the printer. The printer knows how to print the information on the bill and sends it to the printer. The printer takes that information, or the model, and prints it out on paper, and it's returned to the guest. And the front desk clerk gives it to the guest. But most applications aren't quite that simple. Angular applications use multiple components as MVCs in their architecture. Angular uses many components as MVC relationships within its architecture. They can be run side by side. For example, a page or a view can navigate to another page, and it runs its own MVC to display the page. MVCs can also be nested. Sometimes you have information that needs to be displayed on multiple different pages. Those can be converted into their own components or controls that can then be used in multiple different views, and it can run as its own MVC nested within another MVC. Let's take a look at an example of a more advanced hotel application that could have many MVCs. A guest may call the hotel. The hotel then needs to direct them to the appropriate department based on their request. That could be reservations, it could be the front desk, it could be room service or catering. Each of those departments has their own process of handling the guest request and fulfilling that. Sometimes the department can't complete the task by themselves. They need to rely on other services. The front desk may need to call maintenance to, to help out with a room request. Room service or catering may need to rely on a cook to fulfill the order that they've received. But each of the departments has its own process and its own MVC running side by side. How does Angular fit into this? Well, Angular is designed to be modular. And really, modules are the building blocks of Angular 2. What does that mean? Well, it means that the code that you write inside of a class or a module is self-contained. 
It means the code within one module doesn't affect the code within another module. Historically, JavaScript has had a problem with global variables that can run into each other, and you had to be very careful in creating those variables. Angular is designed with modularity in mind so that, uh, so that global variables are avoided. As we go through this course, you'll see that there are several different types of modules available to you. Components, directives, services, and pipes. Let's take a look at how Angular fits in with our advanced hotel application. The PBX operator at our hotel serves the same purpose as the routing mechanism does in Angular. When a request comes in, it gets routed to the correct controller. Components within Angular serve as the controllers for our MVC pattern. And sometimes those components don't have all the information that they need to complete their complete the required tasks. So they call on other classes called services to complete those tasks. How do we build Angular 2 modules? To create a module, we export a class. To use a module that has been created, you import a class. This example you import the data service class that was exported in the example above. Let's take a look at some basic examples how, of how Angular uses modular development. Okay, let's go back to our Angular application and add some additional components. Before we start, let's go ahead and run it again just to see where we left off. Open up my terminal. Okay, there we are. We have just a very basic Hello Angular message written on our web page. Let's start building uh, some components for the application that we'll be working with throughout this course. It's going to be contacts list application. First, let's add just a little bit of styling to make the app look just a little bit better. Just open up our style sheet. Just make the text a little bit cleaner. Next, we're going to add another component that we're going to add to our application. This will be similar to our app.component as we have in here, so just add a new file. It's a TypeScript file called contact.component. And this file is just going to hold the information for one contact. Let's go ahead and paste that file. As you can see, we just create a class called contact component. We also have to import the component object from the Angular core library so that we can use it as a decorator. Our selector is going to be the name of the HTML tag that we're going to create, my-contact, and the template that we use here is just some HTML that's going to display the name, phone number, email, and Twitter handle. In this case, we just hard-coded some text in. We'll take a look at data binding in a different module. Since we've defined this class as an exported class, we want to be able to use it in a different component now, so we'll want to import it there. First thing we'll do is we'll open up our app.component and we want to import the file into here. So we're going to modify the HTML that's in here. Let's make some changes to the template. Instead of displaying Hello Angular, we're now going to display contact information, and then we'll display the My Contact component right underneath that. That should display all the HTML that was added. Now you notice that WebStorm keeps prompting me that the contact component is an unknown component. 
That's because we haven't imported the library yet. Up at the top line, we import the component object from Angular 2 Core. Similarly, we're going to need to import the information for the contact component. Just paste the code. Here. And you'll see that we're importing contact component object from the contact.component file. Let's go ahead and run this application again. As expected, we've got contact information displayed on the page now, and the styling is a little bit cleaner. We've got padding on the edges, and the styling was taken from our style sheet, so the page itself looks a little bit cleaner. Let's take just another look at what Angular required to make this happen. Our root component is the app component, and in, in order to add another control into it, which is what we're doing here, we had to import the library. We had to import the class called contact component in that file. We also had to add a directive called contact component, and with that directive, we can then add the HTML tag that we defined called my contact. In the contact component file, we created a class called contact component. We added a template, which added some HTML. And in order to add that template, we also had to import the component library from the Angular 2 core package. So now you've seen how we can use components. So now you've seen in Angular how we can create multiple components to create an MVC single page application. Yep.